on this episode of the Hockey Nuts Podcast, we reveal the NHL's three stars for the month of October and for the past week. We get you caught up with Dallas and Buffalo's injury situation and Boston's goalie situation. We discuss recent performances of our favorite teams, and we get you fired up for the NHL action coming up this week. We also introduce our new weekly feature, our weekly power ranking of NHL teams. We have all this, plus some college hockey talk, the KHL Minute, and our picks of the week coming up next. This is the Hockey Nuts Podcast, Season 1, Episode 13, recorded on Wednesday, November 2nd, 2016. Tuca is back, baby. Shut up, Shut up and, and sit, sit down. down. Tuca Rask with 33 stops tonight. Centering pass, Dominic Moore is Johnny on the spot. Ten seconds to go. The goalie pulled for Florida. As the Panthers try to tie, Yandel shot. Moore blocks it down. Yandel another chance. Krejci kicks it to the corner. And two U's, two K's, two points. The Bruins win 2-1. Highlights courtesy of Nesson. Uh, you know. Yeah, and as we were told, they're, they're going bananas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Rangers All with right. the draw, and here comes Hayes. Kevin Hayes tries to find Grabner. Grabner scores! It's a hat trick for Michael Grabner! Highlights courtesy of MSG. 23 seconds left in the period, stomping on a dime, Victor Rask. Jesper Faust on him, held in. Hannafin taken down by Grabner, knocked down, rolled around, Skinner, it goes high. Rask out of the corner, Hannafin at the point. Nine seconds left in the period, Victor Rask on his backhand, goes to forehand, his shot, Skinner's off Lundquist. Played this way by Skinner, he hammers one, he scores! At the horn, we'll see Jeff Skinner with a rocket. A hat trick, possibly, as they cascade down here at PNC Arena. We'll see. We'll take a look at the clock, and possibly the Hurricanes have a one goal lead. Highlight courtesy Fox Sports Carolinas. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Hockey Nuts Podcast. My name is Wayne. I'm here with Steve. How's it going today, Steve? Good. Good to be with you, Wayne. We've had we've had a. a a uh, busy week at work. Uh, my job is uh, physical in nature, so strenuous, but uh, I'm here. You know, the only thing that kept me going was was thinking about this podcast and listening to hockey and my wife and I watching the games. That's pretty much it. Hockey kept me going this week. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Although, it, you know, I know this is a hockey podcast, but there's this other thing going on tonight that we're in a kind of in a rush to get this thing over with we've got a That's game right. we've got a game seven uh in the world series and i haven't really been watching too much of it up to this point but i have uh made it a point to watch that game tonight because we could see some history made tonight this is a historic game you're absolutely right yep. and uh i of course i lived in chicago for two years so i'm definitely uh hoping to see the cubs put an end to the curse yeah me too i'm not really a fan of either team but um uh-huh. But uh, I do, I do have that that feel for those Cubs fans that have been going through, a, most of which have never seen a World Series win. So, yeah, um, that's true. I'm hoping to see that uh, they put an end to that streak tonight. So, yeah, that would be a good thing. Yeah. And another thing that's come across the news feed, uh, uh, something more of a local for us is the uh, gas shortage that we might be going under again, the yeah. second time in a couple months because of the uh, pipeline accident down south. Yeah, we're directly affected by gas because we have the Colonial Pipeline come right through our town here. Oh, Greensboro. yeah. And so uh, it is a direct effect. Of course, Greensboro makes gas yep. for uh, for a lot of uh, a lot of places. So uh, when the gas shortage, uh, when the, you know, when the, uh, when there's a leak or a pipeline burst south of us, it has a direct impact on this city and on the price of gas. 
Yeah. So, uh, well, I just, I'm not yeah. so much concerned about the price of it. Just the, the fact that I can get it last time right. we had a little trouble just getting that, it. That, that's right. And I've got that's a trip this weekend that, that we're planning on taking. We're heading up to, into the mountains, to go visit our daughter up at school. So, um, I want to make sure that we have, uh, we are able to get up there and back. <laughs> I hope so too. I hope you can. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's uh, let's move on to some hockey stuff. Before we get going, uh, let me remind everybody. Um, well, first of all, I did want to uh, just say a quick little thing about, about the podcast in general. Um, obviously, uh, you know, everybody in Canada who, or who lives in Canada, you guys have sports radio that you can listen to. You just turn the dial to any sports channel, and 90% of the time you're talking about hockey. Uh, down here in the U.S., especially – south of uh the mason dixon line essentially uh we don't have that uh you turn on sports radio down here and they're talking college football pro football uh basketball right. uh, baseball at least for the next uh few days anyway they'll be talking baseball and they just don't talk hockey at all and one of the reasons we put this podcast together was to help fill that gap um for those of you out there starve for hockey talk um, that's how essentially I found hockey podcasts was, you know, I, I found podcasts in general and, and I decided, Hey, you know, I wonder if anybody's doing hockey podcasts and there are a few people out there, but there really aren't a lot. I, I was earlier this week, I was going over team by team to see, um, how many podcasts there were that were team specific related podcasts. And you'd be amazed at how many teams aren't covered at all by the podcast industry. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. my team, the Boston Bruins, has no less than five different podcasts covering it, which is by far the most of any team that I was able to find. Mm -hmm. uh, but most teams have one, maybe two covering right. covering their team. And there's right. a bunch of teams that don't have any podcasts covering their team. Um, so one of the goals of our podcast was has been to try to fill that gap for, for not only the people in the U.S. who want to listen to Hockey Talk but can't because their local sports station doesn't have it. Or, again, if you, if you are a fan of a team that doesn't have a podcast, um, we'd like to invite you to get involved with our show. Um, you know, if you get involved with the show, uh, we'll talk about if you've we've we've got a very passionate fan listening to us every week and you're at say a fan of, I don't know, the Dallas Stars or whatever. We'll talk about your team a little bit more if we know we've got fans out there that are listening to it. So get involved with the show. Um, there's several ways you can contact us. Uh, you can you can visit our website at the dot com. You can email the show at feedback at the dot com. You can call and leave a voicemail at area code 919-960-1718. Uh, you can tweet me. I'm at Wayne Halley 9 and that's W-A-Y-N-E-H-A-L-L-E-E-9. -E -E you can tweet Steve. He's at sball504man. Um, we have a Facebook uh, page. That's at facebook.com slash the hockey nuts. And of course, we have our YouTube channel where we stream the recording of our podcast live each week. And I have been trying to get in the habit of at the end of recording to go ahead and schedule the next one. So you, when you go on to the YouTube page, you'll see on there the countdown to when the next recording uh, is going to take place. And I happened to, when I got home tonight, pull it up. And for whatever reason, it got flipped over to West Coast time. So when I got home at right before six, it showed we had three hours left before we were podcasting. Well, I had to change that because we're recording now at six Eastern. So um, anyway, we're still working, you know, learning how to use that system. But uh, if you if you happen to be uh, listening, you can certainly, uh, you know, catch us live if you happen to be home or want to watch us at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Generally, it's 6 p.m. Eastern uh, Wednesdays. Yes, sir. Most weeks. And uh, some some weeks we push it back to Thursday. Some weeks we push it ahead to Tuesday. But usually it's Wednesday and, you know, rain date is either or a day in between. So I don't know if you had anything else to add to that before we start no, talking I, about the weeks. <laughs> I think I think you did a great job. You know, this show what what, uh, you know, if I was a hockey fan uh, and I am, uh, I, we talk about it from the fans perspective. You know, this, this we're not we're not uh, uh, um, members of the press, nor do we have connections in any way. We're just two fans talking about the game. And as you said, uh, you know, that doesn't exist right now in the market we live in. Uh, so, 
it, it really does fill a gap for those people who are big hockey fans and want to, especially, you know, Carolina Hurricanes in this area, uh, don't have that opportunity to listen to a lot of that unless you live right in Raleigh and you're tuned into some AN station that they're talking about it where, you know. And even uh, then, even then that station, I know of a station that, well, the, the home station that broadcasts their games, they do talk about the Canes occasionally. But right. But still 90% of their talk is college football, college, college basketball. Football. Yeah. And CAA basketball. That, yeah. That's the big, the big sports. And uh, we want to try and uh, get hockey to have a bigger listening uh, voice. And, and this, is, uh, this is the way we chose to do it. And I think it's, uh, I think it's a great thing. Yep. So, uh, and we're having a lot of fun doing it. So we're, we gonna, are having we're certainly going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's get on to uh, the uh, events of the past week. But uh, First and foremost, let me go ahead and uh, pause at the moment so we can Insert uh, all of the scores from the past week, and then we'll uh, pick it up on the other side. The following are the scores around the NHL that have taken place over the past week. On Thursday, October 27, 2016, there were nine games around the league. The Montreal Canadiens beat the Lightning 3-1. The Wild shut out the Sabres 4-0. The Coyotes edged the Flyers 5-4. The Penguins beat the Islanders 4-2. The Maple Leafs edged the Panthers 3-2. The Red Wings beat the Blues in a shootout 2-1. The Jets beat the Stars 4-1. The Kings beat the Predators in overtime 3-2. And the final game of the night, the Sharks beat the Blue Jackets 3-1. On Friday, October 28, 2016, there were six games around the league. The Oilers beat the Canucks 2-0. The Hurricanes edged the Rangers 3-2. The Blackhawks beat the Devils in overtime 3-2. The Jets shut out the Avalanche 1-0. The Flames beat the Senators 5-2. And the Blue Jackets shut out the Ducks 4-0. On Saturday, October 29th, there were 10 games around the league. The Canadiens beat the Maple Leafs 2-1. The Bruins shut out the Red Wings 1-0. The Sabres also shut out the Panthers 3-0. The Devils beat the Lightning 3-1. The Penguins beat the Flyers 5-4. The Blues shut out the Kings 1-0. And in another shutout, the Wild beat the Stars 4-0. The Avalanche beat the Coyotes 3-2. The Capitals beat the Canucks 5-2. And in the final game of the night, the Sharks beat the Predators 4-1. On Sunday, October 30th, there were eight games around the NHL. The Senators shut out the Oilers 2-0. The Rangers destroyed the Lightning 6-1. The Flyers edged the Hurricanes 4-3. The Sabres beat the Jets 3-1. The Panthers beat the Red Wings 5-2. The Islanders dominated the Maple Leafs 5-1. The Blackhawks shut out the Kings 3-0. And the final game of the night, the Capitals beat the Flames 3-1. There were no games on Halloween night, October 31st, 2016. So we'll move on to Tuesday, November 1st. 2016, there were 12 games around the league. The Maple Leafs beat the Oilers in overtime 3 to 2. The Rangers destroyed the Blues 5 to nothing. The Bruins edged the Panthers 2 to 1. The Senators beat the Hurricanes in overtime 2 to 1. The Lightning dominated the Islanders 6 to 1. The Blue Jackets beat the Stars in overtime 3 to 2. The Sabres edged the Wild 2 to 1. The Capitals beat the Jets 3 to 2. The Blackhawks dominated the Flames 5 to 1. The Predators also won big over the Avalanche 5-1. The Coyotes edged the Sharks 3-2. And the final game of the night, the Ducks shut out the Kings 4-0. And that was all the games around the NHL over the past week. I would also like to add, as listeners to this podcast, if there are other leagues that you would like us to read scores for you as part of this podcast, please give us an email at feedback at thehockeynuts.com. We certainly would like to hear from you. If there are any junior leagues or college or minor leagues that you would like to get weekly score updates on, uh, we certainly would like to oblige and uh, just let us know if that's something you would like to see. Again, the email address is at feedback at thehockeynuts.com. Now, back to the show. Okay, so let's move on to this week's headlines. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about our teams and how they did over the past week. I'll go ahead and get the Boston Bruins out of the way because uh, they only had two games in the past week. And thankfully, Tuka Rask came back this week. So yeah. Boston only had two games, but they got two wins. A one nothing win at Detroit on the 29th and a 2-1 win at Florida on the 1st. And the, the overwhelming 
um, theme to the those two games was what a difference having Tuca in net versus not. Uh, just the overall team play was totally different. Uh, you know, they've been struggling, particularly in the second period this year. And both games, they were they were just tight as can be uh, defensively in the second period. And throughout the whole game, they only gave up one goal total in those two games and ended up coming out on top. And Detroit and Florida are both two fairly decent teams. Yes, sir. So, two big wins. So, uh, uh, you know, they needed those wins, and yeah. it was great having Tuca back. And now he's... I believe he's five and zero, maybe six and zero, five and zero. I think. Yeah. Because he was three and three and zero before the injury, so he's now five and zero. Yeah. And his numbers are are ridiculous. He's he's like less than two goals against average, and I don't have it in front of me, but I'm just you know guessing off the top of my head. I saw him earlier this week, and it's like nine thirty, nine forty save percentage. I mean, just ridiculous numbers right now for him. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it makes me a little bit nervous because uh, it could be. You know, if if they don't find a decent backup or somebody reliable, I mean, they can't play him eighty two games. Right. So that's right. So they're gonna wear him out if if uh, they end up having to uh, rely on him for seventy plus games. He's it's proven to be the case in the past, and they need to find somebody who they can rely on uh, in the backup role. Yeah. But other than that, overall good week. Oh, excellent week for the Bruins, and as you said, Tuka Rask might be the. Next to Carey Price or with Carey Price as the best goalies in the NHL. Um, certainly could make an argument there. Yep. Um, I, I was going to talk about the Rangers in our three games. Um, and, you know, if anyone watched that game against Carolina, three to two, my hat's off to them. Jeff Skinner played out of his mind. He played a great game, and so did Cam Ward. And uh, they beat us three to two in the opening night uh, festivities. But I thought we played a very good game that night, and that was uh, that was on October 28th. Uh, our second game of the week, we beat Tampa Bay six to one, and I was very happy about that game. <laughs> yeah, if there was a team I wanted to beat and beat good, uh, it was Tampa Bay because Martin Jones. Uh, I mean Martin Jones. Pardon me. Ben Bishop has never lost to the Rangers until this night. Yep. So he was eight and zero, and uh, they they were tough on him. I don't know if you watched that game, but they. I didn't they, see it. No, I didn't see the games. Yeah, the, Rangers, the games. Rangers fans were very tough on him during that game. But I was very glad to see us win that game, and I felt like we played the best game of the year until last night when we played St. Louis, and uh, that was our best performance of the year. It was yeah. easily Henrik's best performance, and I feel like if we keep that kind of thing going along. Uh, you know, will be in contention uh, at the end of the year. Well, which yeah. It seemed like on paper anyway, the the, the loss to Carolina kind of lit a fire under them that the, the last two games since then, I mean, to whip up on Tampa Bay like that, who's who's a quite frankly a Stanley Cup contender this year, yeah. and St. Louis, who's also going to be a playoff team, to whip up on them. I mean, yeah. I, I was very surprised to see those scores uh, when I saw them. I wasn't able to see the games, but... When I saw the scores and the stats, I'm like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was it was really uh, enjoyable to sit down in front of the TV the last two nights and watch those games. <laughs> no doubt about no, it. No, no, no biting your nails in the last couple <laughs> that's of nights. Right. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. Um, so, but, well, good. Well, good. Good overall week for the Rangers. Anyway, they're they've got some momentum going for sure. Yeah. So on to Carolina, our local team. Uh, Carolina got a 3-2 win against the Rangers on the 28th, which you you talked about, but uh, I'll talk about from the Carolina perspective. Uh, and then a 4-3 loss against Philly on the 30th. And then last night, a 2-1 overtime loss at Ottawa uh, on the 1st. And the win versus the Rangers, obviously, is great for them. Uh, gives them confidence that they can beat a, a decent team. Um, Cam Ward played really well that night, um, but unfortunately... He's not able to. He hasn't at least this point to this point this year. He hasn't been able to uh, um, put together really consistently good uh, games. Um, I believe he was in net for the loss against Philadelphia uh, in that game. So um, yes. that was that was uh, that was a tough one to take because you know Philadelphia is a decent team too. So, uh, yeah. but but I did watch the game last night. I didn't see the Philly game, but I did see the game last night. And I was very disappointed in the outcome of that one because Carolina had the one nothing lead for a good chunk of that game, mm -hmm. and then gave up uh, 
the tying goal. Uh, it wasn't like super late that they gave it up, but it was, uh, uh, you know, it was tied for pretty much most of the third period. And uh, uh, just the goal that they gave up in overtime just was one of those where like, uh, I think Cam Ward wished he had that one back because uh, they're saying he got screened on the play and that's why the goal got by him. And that's possible. That's the case. But to me, uh, without being, you know, on, on the ice, obviously, I, you know, I can't see uh, whether or not 100% if he was screened, but it just looked like a goal that he could have and should have stopped. I did not watch that game last night, so I can't speak to it. But I know that um, Carolina plays in a lot of those games. Yeah. One goal games where it's it's a, you know, it's a, a tough loss for them because they played so tight, probably outplayed the team. But, well, they did get out shot last night, but um, Ottawa is still riding on the on the uh, on the uh, emotions of that of you know their, of Craig their, Anderson, Craig Anderson, the goalie, and all the uh, personal issues that he's been having to deal with. So Ottawa's just playing with a you know a little extra motivation right now. But but Carolina skated with them for the for the most part. I mean, yeah, they got out shot, but they they got plenty of chances too. And they yes. just couldn't. They just couldn't put that second goal in, and and the goal that they let in in overtime just it felt like they, you know, they should have stopped that one. At least that's the way it looked to me. I hear you. <laughs> so, I hear you. I hear so you. disappointing end to the week for them, but they did manage to get a point out of that. So they got three points out of a possible six this week, and uh, they do need to start winning some games here, though. They're they're starting to fall behind a little bit in the East, and if they want any chance to uh, make the playoffs, they gotta they gotta get things going. They can't fall t- too far behind because <laughs> climbing that uphill it's not an easy thing. That's right. You're right. So okay, well let's move on to some transactions and. Uh, up to last night when I wrote my show notes, there wasn't any, but when I got home today, I find out that we have a trade. There was a trade today. That's correct. Yep. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins traded goalie Mike Condon to Ottawa for a fifth round pick in the 2017 NHL entry draft, which, uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure how Ottawa set up uh, with their goalie, Craig Anderson's number one. Don't they have the Hamburglar? Hamburglar is there, but he's injured. Okay. So, and and they really want to give Anderson time. Uh, if you hadn't heard, you know, we've alluded to it, but uh, Craig Anderson's wife was diagnosed with cancer this earlier this week. Or actually it was, um, I think she got diagnosed several months ago, but this week things have seemed, they're not talking much about it. We don't know much details but it seems to me that Craig Anderson, he's been leaving the team here and there to go be with her. And it seems like, um, at least on the surface anyway, it seems like she may be taking a turn, um, which is unfortunate. So, yes, it is. Uh, But that's just my purely my speculation. I don't know, know for sure uh, what's going on behind the scenes. But anyway, um, he's been leaving the team or he's been wanting to leave the team to go uh, be with her and, and, you know, and the, the, the senators want to do that, but with hammer being, uh, injured. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, you know, it makes it tough for them to let him go. So, uh, Ottawa made the deal to bring in Mike Condon. He can hold down the fort and allow Anderson to leave and, uh, go take care of things at home. And, uh, that should make things a little bit easier on them. You know, uh, I think it would be good to say that we wish uh, Craig Anderson, uh, you know, the best uh, and our, our prayers go with uh, him and his family. Um, I think uh, I think uh, it was really touching the other night to see Cam uh, um, Cam Talbot in the player runway cheering and the whole stadium Rogers Place cheering for Craig Anderson. Yep. Uh, as player of the game, game or one of the, the top star of the game, I believe, in the game. He got uh, number one star played. against the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton yeah. Oilers. And that was really, really uh, great to yep. see that. Yeah, he played really well. I watched the third period of that game, and it was he was lights out. And the numbers he's putting up, particularly in the last several games, are just amazing. Uh, very inspiring to see him playing his heart out like that. Yes, yes uh, it is. With everything else he's got to deal with uh, off the ice, so... Um, so yeah, um, like, like you said, our prayers are definitely with him and his family. Hopefully, uh, they can, uh, pull out of this thing. Uh, so that was the reason for the trade anyway, was to help alleviate that situation for them. But that was the only, uh, trade or signing or anything of that nature this week. 
other than of course you got your regular call ups, call downs. You know, That's we're, right. we're not going to get into that. Of course, I do include a link in the show notes. If you do want to see all the teams and all the transactions that have occurred, uh, including all the call ups and and you know sending people up and to, to and from the minor league teams, uh, there is a link in the show notes that that will take you to that list of all those. Uh, but we're just just focusing on the big ones, the trades, the signings, and those type of things. All right. Well, let's move on to some injuries. Uh, I've got an update on the Dallas situation. Uh, Dallas right wing Alice Hemsky could miss the rest of the regular season after having surgery to repair a torn hip labrum uh, on Monday. The injury occurred while playing for Team Czech Republic at the World Cup uh, back in August. He'll be out, or September actually, he'll be out of the lineup for five to six months as he recovers and rehab- rehabilitates. Manager Jim Nill told the uh, Stars website. Hemsky, who's 33, missed the first four games of the regular season, but then played 25 shifts, totaling 15 minutes and 32 seconds of ice time against the Blue Jackets on October 22nd. He appeared to lose speed as the game went along and went back on injury reserve the next day. Uh, as for other Dallas players, Matthias Yanmark could miss the entire regular season because of an injury. Cody Aiken is two to three weeks away, according to Ruff, and hasn't practiced since injuring his knee the first day of training camp. Uh, Patrick Sharp hasn't skated since sustaining a concussion uh, back on October 20th against the Kings, but he has been working out off the ice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Forwards Jamie Benn and Patrick Eves are playing through uh, injuries that they have. And center Jason Spezza played against the Minnesota Wild after missing two games because of a lower body injury. So it looks like Spezza's back now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the Dallas situation is. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> yeah, they're they're, uh, they're on life support. And with, uh, and it shows in the standings. They're they're digging themselves a hole in the standings right now. Yeah. Yes. So uh, Minnesota left wild left wing Zach Parise is week to week at with a lower body injury. The 32 year old did not play in a four nothing win against the Dallas stars on Saturday after he was injured in a four nothing wing win against the Sabres on Thursday. Uh, the wild move rookie Joel Erickson Eck from center to left wing with Parise out of the lineup. They also recalled t- uh, forwards Tyler Gro- Grovac and Christoph Birchie. I hope I got those names right. <laughs> From yeah. Iowa of the American Hockey League. In the eight games this season, uh, Parise has two goals and six points. He scored his 300th and 301st NHL goals in a 6-3 loss to the Islanders on October 23rd and has 625 points in 769 career games. Yes, very good. Very good. The Ottawa Senators goaltender Andrew Hammond left the game on Friday against the Calgary Flames with a lower body injury. He was replaced by Der- Chris Drager. Mm-hmm. Uh, Drager. Uh, to begin the second period after allowing a goal and four shots, Ottawa led two nothing, two to one after the first. Uh, so we were talking about that a little bit earlier in regards to uh, Anderson, but uh, he's day to day at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have an update in Buffalo. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres got positive news regarding injuries to center Jack Eichel and left wing Evander Kane. Those are two of their best players, by the way. And, no doubt about it. <laughs> and they yeah. and they may have Robin Lehner uh, back from illness on Saturday. I believe he actually played. Um, uh, I, I could have sworn he played last night or uh, the recent game in Boston played. But uh, yeah, I, Buffalo, think he, I think he played Sunday. So yeah. uh, Eichel's out of the walking boot that he's had on since he was injured during practice on October 12th. Uh, let's see. I don't know exactly what his exercise level that he moved to, but I know he was walking in the boot for a few days before and got the boot off. And we saw him walking around post game on Thursday with the boot off. That was a quote from uh, coach Dan Bosma. Kane sustained four crap ri- ribs during Buffalo's opening night 4 one loss against the Canadians on October 13th. Just over two weeks after being injured, he's nearly ready to resume workouts. So not, ne- none of those guys are ready to play yet, or not for in terms of Eichel and Kane, but looks like they're coming along. Yeah, and you know that's quite a quick recovery for Evander Kane, especially with a rib injury like that. Uh, you know, uh, two weeks. Uh, I guess maybe we'd say three to be safe. Now that's really good. They they uh, they'd have to look at that and and say, hey, we we got a quick turnaround on this injury being. Uh, uh, you know the the full healing taking place rather quickly. Yeah, uh, and uh, and they need him back, and they need Eichel. Oh, yeah, if they want to nope. make any kind of run this year. Yeah, no so question. that's all I had for uh, for um, injuries, unless you had it some. Uh, I did not have 
any to mention other than what you you said. Um, those were the major injuries that I had for the for the the week that uh, we just went through. Okay. Let's move on to suspensions and fines then. Yes, sir. Uh, Detroit Red Wings forward Steve Ott has been fined uh, a bunch of twos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's a bunch of twos. Right. $2,222.22. The maximum <laughs> allowable un under the collective bargaining agreement for spearing Boston Bruins defenseman Zdeno Chara during NHL game number 115 in Detroit on Saturday, October 29th. Um, the incident occurred at 12 seconds of the first period. Now, <laughs> um, I watched that game, obviously, um, and I thought it was a very dirty play. I mean, he, he wasn't penalized for it. The refs didn't see it. Uh, right. But you saw, you saw that they showed on the replay. He, he literally, and that's a dangerous play. That's spear. I've had, I've been speared myself. It hurts. Oh, I got me. It hurts. Yeah, it's, especially if they spear you, you know, in the uh, groin. It, yeah. At night. Yeah. And the twig and berries, so to speak. Yeah. And, and I think that's roughly where it happened with Ch Chara. Um, although Chara didn't get hurt enough to, to get, you know, to miss any time. He, he was back in the game very shortly after that, but. But um, other than that, I mean, you know, he, he got the, uh, the the fine. It wasn't, I guess it, they deemed it wasn't suspension worthy. But um, the, the fine amount, it says it's the maximum yeah. allowable under the collective. What must have been the, uh, the, the collective bargaining when they were talking about that, they're, they're, when they're talking yeah. about fines? Well, we got to come to a number of what the maximum allowable amount. All that stuff is donated. I, I yeah. mean, uh, not donated. Uh, all that stuff is negotiated. Yeah, yeah. And what a joke. He he probably earns that in ten minutes of ice time. Two two you know? two 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 two. Yeah. <laughs> How did they come up with that number? <laughs> you know, the the, the 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 league says, "Well, we want to find him three thousand. And the, you know, the players said, "No, two thousand. Well, let's just settle on two 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 two. <laughs> Oh, and 22 cents and 22 cents yeah yeah it's pretty funny yeah uh, anyway so so yeah when i saw that i'm like and, you know several bruins players attacked him too so he got his due on the ice and off <laughs> all right and speaking of boston bruins and suspensions boston bruins forward david pasternak has, has been suspended for two games without pay for an illegal check to the head of new york rangers defenseman Dan Girardi during NHL game number 95 in New York on Wednesday, October 26th. Um, the player safety department of player safety announced today. Uh, the incident occurred at 1055 of the second period. Pasternak was assessed a minor penalty for illegal check to the head. And based on his average annual salary, Pasternak will uh, forfeit $10,277. A real hit cents. to the, you know, that's a swift kick in the pants. For what he, what I feel was was a tough. I felt the two minute penalty was was all he should have been assessed, uh, and instead he's paying over ten grand. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, we talked I'm about Rangers, it. You know, know, I'm a Rangers fan. Yeah, but I think he was over penalized. <laughs> well, and and everybody in Boston would agree with you on that one. Um, when I saw the play happen, when I saw it at full speed. I was right there with you at full speed. It doesn't look as bad as, yeah. um, and I, and I watched the video that the, the department of player safety released and you know, they, they analyze these things in super slow motion, right. which, you know, really brings out, you know, they, they were saying in the video that he, that he lifted and launched in like in an upward motion, making the head, the principal point of contact. Well, when he started to make that hit, and if you look at it at full speed, you, you, you know, you can tell, he wanted to hit him. Now, Dan Girardi was jumping to catch a puck that was up over his head. Yeah. He wanted to hit Dan Girardi in the body. I right. Can, I can clearly see it. But because of the timing of it, Dan Girardi came down. And because he came down, of course, when you land, you kind of, you know, bend a little bit. Right. Well, because of the timing of it, he missed the body and made contact with the head. Right. So at most, I felt, you know, it was accidental. I agree. I don't think that you can clearly see in a lot of these the intent to hit the player in the head as as a as a you know um, the 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 ability to uh, stop and avoid what happens is there, and they don't stop. They right. clearly go on. It's not finishing their check. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna you know. Uh, give this guy uh, a swift one, yeah. And you can you can see that um, this p particular play 
was not one of those instances. I don't think David Pasternak in any way meant to 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 uh, uh, hit him in to, the head. It, yeah, it's yeah. I just think you know that's the way the game was going right then at the moment, and he there was no way he could have stopped. Yeah, and he you know he was just a tough hockey play. That's what it was. Uh, two minutes for roughing, okay. I mean that's debatable, but. You know, that's all it should have been, I think. Yeah. Um, and, well, and, and, you know, it's a perfect segue, Wayne, into the next one, um, if, if, if you wanted to go into that. Yep. Uh, and that's, that's what happened today. It was announced that Tom Gilbert, uh, defenseman for the Los Angeles Kings, is scheduled to have a player safety hearing tomorrow for his hit on forward uh, Nick Ritchie of the Anaheim Ducks that actually knocked Ritchie out of the game. And uh, he is still not going to play. He's not going to play tomorrow night. Uh, if you look at that hit, it was avoidable, um, at least as in my opinion. Now, I have not played hockey, um, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, though, and I can speak my mind from that perspective. Um, that was a malicious hit. Hmm. The guy was pl- plastered up against the boards, um, and, and I felt like, uh, you know, he was not penalized for the play. Uh, so... Uh, the game was allowed to continue, and there's no way the refs couldn't see that. Um, I, I don't know why he wasn't penalized for it, but I guess the the call on the ice was that it wasn't uh, uh, penalizable. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah. regardless, uh, if you replay and look at that that hit, um, you know it, it was avoidable. He went for the head. Uh, he knocked the guy down. I mean, he really gave him a, a, a tough hit in a position that Nick Ritchie was in. Uh, he was in a definitely in a vulnerable position against the boards like that. So, uh, you know, um, th- those are two contrasting things that, you know, I think uh, that one, if he got a game or two suspension, I would completely agree with it. Yeah. And I'll have to I'll have to see the video for myself to determine, um, I, you know, I'm sure you're right on that. If it if it looks if it looks deliberate and malicious, it probably is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it could have been a lot worse, you know, yeah. uh, I'm not saying it, it wasn't, uh, you know, it could have been a lot worse, but it was definitely, uh, on the level of, uh, it didn't need to be made. Uh, he yeah. was, he wasn't finishing his check. Hmm. Um, you know, he, he really uh, ran him through. So, wow. um, but that's my opinion. Okay. I'm a fan. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's all we have is our opinion. That's right. All right. Well, let's move on to, uh, our next category, milestones, records, and honors. Uh, I've got a few of them that have happened this week. Yes. Um, we'll start with Edmonton Oilers center, Connor McDavid, Montreal Canadiens defenseman, Shea Weber, and Florida Panthers center, Jonathan Marcheseau, have been named NHL's three stars for the month of October. McDavid paced the NHL with with 12 points in nine games to power the Oilers to a 7-2 and two record. That was uh, before... Yeah, through last night's games, or no, Monday night's games. I don't think that included last night uh, to the because they lost last night. To the top of the uh, Pacific Division and Western Conference, Weber led all defensemen with a 10 points in nine games to guide the Canadians to an 8-0-1 and and record. Um, and yeah. that is, uh, yeah, to first place in the league standings, highlighted by seven-game winning streak to close the month. Marcia So shared the league lead with six goals and tied for third overall with 11 points in nine games to lift the Panthers to a 4-4-1 record uh, in October. So, big surprise there is uh, Marcia So. He came out of nowhere, huh? Yeah, he did. <laughs> I, uh, uh, what is he, 26 years old, I think, 25 or 26? Um, I don't even he, think he's on the first line. but Yeah, he's got 11 points. Yep, 11 Playing points. Playing great. Having a good season. He sure you know, we is. We expect so much for Connor McDavid and Shea Weber, but yeah, um, but yeah, K- kudos to the three of those guys for sure. And you know, you could have put Cam Talbot in there, uh, who was playing at his just playing great hockey as a goalie. Yep. But uh, yep, it's uh, possible. Um, yep. And the next one, Toronto Maple Leaf center William Nylander, who lit, led all rookies with seven assists and eleven points in nine games, has been named the NHL's Rookie of the Month. For the month of October, Nylander ed- edge teammate Austin Matthews, who had 10 points in nine games. Winnipeg Jets right wing Patrick Lane, Philadelphia Flyers center Travis Konechny, uh, and New York Rangers left wing Jimmy VC uh, were all named uh, runners up for this award. So that was a big surprise there. Who would have thought after four scoring four goals in the opening game yeah, uh, and playing as well as he has that his own teammate Nylander uh, beats him out for the rookie of the month? 
for the. I'd have Indiana never guessed over. it. <laughs> if you told me, I'd have never guessed it. Yeah. Well, uh, Matthews' is kind of production has kind of tailed off a little bit in in the last several games. So sure, yeah. he had those four four goals, but it, in the other eight games that he's played, he's only scored two goals. Right. So so understandable uh, I there. I know he's not a rookie, okay, but he's still, you know, if if you. If you take into consideration the fact that he had that uh, quite a long injury, uh, Connor McDavid still probably would be considered playing in his rookie season because of uh, the length of time he was out with the the broken collarbone. Yeah, he missed almost 50 games with that injury. But I'm telling you, last night, did you see that play? Nazem Kadri used his arm to push him out of the way, go by and score the goal in overtime to win. I heard that he took the puck away from McDavid to go in and score. So I haven't seen the play yet, no. I thought McDavid handled it very well. It looked like a penalty to me. But uh, Nazem Kadri had been, and Nazem Kadri had been on him all game. He shadowed uh, Connor McDavid, stuck him, played he's, him. He's played a pest him. anyway. He's that. He's he, a pest. He's you're, that kind of player. Not, yeah, I agree with you. Yep. And uh, he was all over Connor McDavid and running his mouth. Um, and I thought Connor McDavid took it really well. But that thing there at the end in overtime, where he literally takes his hand, grabs a hold of Connor McDavid, and pushes him out of the way to go score a goal, um, was really something. Yeah, I'll have to look that <laughs> one up too. I got a list. I got a list of videos here. I got to go see. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Wayne, you're a referee. If you were on the ice in a city like Toronto and something like that happened and none of the other officials did anything, what what would you, you know, that's tough. I, I really, that, that is an environment and a team, uh, particularly with the fans they have there. Yep. I, what would you do? Well, you know what? I could tell you for a fact that the guys that referee at that level, they don't give a rat's ass what, <laughs> what, what, what the fans think about their calls. They're, oh, they're, their, their, their uh, main objective is to get the call right. So <laughs> yeah. if they feel that he did something to, you know, give him, give him an, the way they look at it or the way they talk about it is, is does he get an unfair advantage by using his stick or, you know, an illegal way to gain an advantage on your opponent? Then they would have called a penalty. Okay. So apparently they felt that he didn't do. And only the guys in armbands can call penalties anyway. So if I was a linesman and I felt there was a penalty, there's absolutely nothing I can nothing do. You, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Only the guys with the orange bands can call penalties. Um, the only times the linesmen are allowed to call penalties is for like a too many men on the ice. Uh, that's the oh, only oh. only situation where they can call a penalty. That is very interesting. Yep. That's very interesting. The, the, the rest well, of the time... The rest of the time, they just have to sit there and watch. Now, there's other situations where they can call, like if somebody, you know, did a vicious spear behind the play, you know, trying to hurt a guy, they can go to the referee and say, hey, you know, anything that rises to the level of a major or match penalty, they can go to the referee. They can't stop play and assess the penalty, but they can wait till the next whistle and say, hey, behind the play, this guy speared that guy pretty bad. We need to call something. Right. And the referee will go over to the bench and, and explain what happened. The linesman saw this, and we didn't see it, and we're calling this penalty. You know, But it's so rare that that happens, especially now that they use four officials. Um, the referees are incredibly good at staying in a position where they can see everybody. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, it was, it, I really want to get your opinion on it when you have a chance to take a look at that video. And I'm sure uh, somebody's put it together, TSN or one of the guys, uh, could get, could give a full length video of that game and the duel that went on between Nazem Kadri and Connor McDavid, and then you tell me what you think uh, in regards to overtime uh, and and that uh, goal that Kadri scored to win the game for them. Well, I could uh, watch I could watch the game on replay with my uh, NHL TV account. So I literally was jumping back and forth to that game and the Rangers game yep. uh, because I wanted to see how Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid fared, but it was really exciting. Very exciting game. So well, good. Yeah. So on to the next uh, record of milestone, Ottawa Senators goaltender, Craig Anderson, Minnesota wild goaltender, Devin Dubnik and Montreal Canadiens defenseman, Shea Weber have been named NHL's Three stars for the week ending October 30th. Anderson stopped all 59 shots he faced to post a 2-0 record and guide the Senators to third place in the Atlantic Division. Uh, Dubinick was also flawless, denying all 94 shots against three stars, uh, or against, yeah, in three starts to lead the Wilds to a 3-0-0 week 
and first place in the Central Division. Weber registered 3-2-5, and five, including a pair of game-winning goals to power the Canadiens to a 4-0 and oh week and to the top of the NHL standings. So five points in four games for him. So obviously the shutout streaks are going to win over any kind of point streak. Oh, yes. <laughs> any Anytime goaltenders put up multiple shutouts in a row, Anderson had two. And uh, Dubinik had three in a row. That's uh, amazing. That's incredible. Yep. Truly amazing. And I, uh, just before the show started, I went on quanthockey.com and I checked the uh, uh, stats because, you know, Henrik had a shutout last night. Yep. Uh, and uh, you'd be surprised how that set up. A lot of the older goalies, uh, you know, Henrik has 60, uh, but he is way down the list. I think he's 17. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of names in there that I did. Tiny Thompson, I think he played for the Bruins. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, but a lot of goalies that are from yesteryear uh, that are way up in the standings on that. Terry Sawchuk, of course, um, is at 103, and if it hadn't been for Marty Brodeur, that record might have never been broken. Uh, yeah, back in the 60s, 60s and early 70s, 50s, back in that era, the game was very similar in terms of goals per game. Uh, the mm-hmm. game was very similar to the game today. A lot of shutouts, a lot of low-scoring games. And then when we hit the mid-70s, and obviously through the 80s and into the early 90s, it was a different kind of area where scoring was – all the scoring records were set. And, and none of the goalies during that era were putting up shutouts, or, right. or at least very few. Right. And, then, and then you know the, the modern-day goalie and the bigger pads and the more athletic goalies uh, took control. And now we're back in an era where, where scoring is way, way down again. Right. So the goalies of today are able to – uh, compete against those goalies of yesteryear. <laughs> yes, yes. In the in the shutouts area, anyway. So, well, good. Let's uh, go. Oh, we got a couple of more. Uh, St. Louis Blues defenseman Jay Boomeister uh, played his 1,000th game against the New York Rangers on Tuesday. The 33-year-old was selected by the Florida Panthers with the number three overall pick in the 2002 NHL draft. That was 16 years ago. Yeah. Um, he's more of a stay-at-home guy. He was back then, I remember when he was drafted, he was expected to be the next, uh, who would they compare him to? Like, uh, I don't remember. Uh, Niedermeyer, I think, was one of the comparisons with him. You know, just a you know real big gamer. But nowadays, he's more of a stay-at-home guy. Right. Um, uh, you know, he had a, a stretch there of 759 consecutive games, which I think is the fifth longest in NHL history. Yep. An Iron Man, uh, uh, for sure. Yep. Uh, and so uh, to play in a thousand games this quickly, he's only thirty-three. Yep. Uh, he may. He may. He may go reach for- fifteen hundred. Yeah. Oh, no question about it. Yeah, he may. He may reach fi- fifteen hundred. No question. If he stays healthy. That's right. All right. Pittsburgh Penguins forward Evgeny Malkin scored twice against the Philadelphia Flyers on Saturday to reach the three hundred NHL goal mark. He scored number 300 at 833 of the third period to break a 4-4 tie, and Pittsburgh ended up winning the game 5-4. He scored number 299 earlier in the game at 938 of the second period to give a Pittsburgh a 4-2 lead. He has five goals so far this season. He's 30 years old, played 653 NHL games, and he's the sixth player to score 300 goals for the Penguins. The other five are Mario Lemieux, Yarmir Yager, Sidney Crosby, Gene Provnost, Rick Kehoe. Uh, that's the other five. Okay. That's right. Of the 324 have come against the Flyers. Yeah. So. And, you know, I, I I love Gino. I think he's the best player on the Penguins team. He suffers a lot because of injuries. But I'm telling you, he's got a heart. Uh, he is a true uh, – you know, he's a Milan Luc- Lucic. Yep. Of the Eastern Conference, and he, uh, he, I don't think you'd say that he's one of those Russians that's going to bolt for the KHL. He, no, I think he loves I, it in Pittsburgh. Yep, he loves it here. Yep, and I've and I've seen him a couple. I don't know if you've seen if you've gone to any games here when the Pittsburgh Penguins have come to town, but I've gone a couple of times, and he's fun to watch live too. I'd love to watch him play. I've never had the opportunity. Uh, that's one guy I would go out of my way. I'd spend extra money to go yep. see Gino play because he's a super player, man. I he's, tell you. he's much bigger than he looks, too, once you get to see him in person. Oh, yeah, I bet you. Because one of our favorite things to do when we go to the games is we'll go, uh, even if we don't have tickets down the lower bowl, they let you go down for warm up. So we'll go in right when the door is open. We'll go in and get down near the boards for the visiting team uh, end of the rink and watch all the visiting team players come. So you know, I've, I've seen quite a few of the players uh, come through Carolina anyway. Mm-hmm. And some guys, you know, they, they – 
they look smaller in person than you thought. And other guys are much bigger in person than you thought. And, yeah. and my daughter is still, every time we go to a Bruins game, she's amazed at how tall Zdeno Chara is. Oh, he is. <laughs> he, yeah. I agree with you. Like and his stick is as long as, I mean, I might be the longest yeah. stick in yeah. the NHL. It is. But, uh, yeah, he had to get an exemption to uh, from the league to, to, he technically has a stick that's longer than the league rule book allows, but he had to get an exemption to use that Wow. because of yeah. how tall he is. But anyway, all right, so let's move on to a couple other stories. These are outside the NHL, but still interesting anyway. Uh, the United States and Canada will play outdoors at New Era Field, home of the NFL's Buffalo Bills, in the preliminary round of the 2018 IIHF World Junior Championship on December 29th. USA Hockey and the Buffalo Sabres announced the date and matchup of the first outdoor game to be played in any IIHF World Championship at KeyBank Center in Buffalo on Friday. It'll be the largest crowd ever to attend a junior hockey game, and it's terrific with our friends from the Sabres and the Bills to be able to make history again as part of the World Junior Championships in 2018 in Buffalo. Uh, USA Hockey Executive Director David Ogrian said, uh, USA-Canada Outdoor Game highlights the return of the tournament to Buffalo for the first time since the 2011 World Junior Championship. Since the 2011 World Junior Championship, Harbor Center was built next door to KeyBank Center, and those two venues, along with New Era Field, will host all the games for the tournament. Uh, U.S.-Canada will be the first hockey game played at New Era Field since the 2008 NHL Winter Classic when the Sabres hosted the Penguins. Now, the World Junior Championship, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but it is a terrific tournament to watch. Yeah, I, and my and, wife and I watch it every year. And unfortunately, Americans don't give a crap about this tournament. Uh, yeah. it, it bugs me, too, because... This tournament, you are literally watching the future stars of the game. That's all be... all the names that we've talked about in all these podcasts, all the big names, Crosby, uh, Malkin, Ovechkin, you name it. They've all they all pl- took part in this tournament. These right. are the these are the best players in the world under the age of 20 or 20 and under. I mean, this is it's a terrific tournament. I wish more Americans cared about it. Uh, because I would like to see it right now when the Americans host it, it only takes place essentially in the, in the winter months, uh, States, Buffalo, Detroit. Um, I don't know. Boston did it one year, some years ago. I remember they hosted, um, Minnesota, you know, that's the only areas that care enough about it. Unfortunately, if they had the world junior championships here in Carolina, They'd be sitting in front of red seats and nothing much more than that. I, I agree with because you. Because people down here just don't care about that. But it's terrific hockey. It's fun to watch. It's it's an amazing tournament. It is. No question about it. It's kind of like the McDonald All-Stars, the high school players that play in the basketball. Or, you know, uh, to a lesser degree, maybe the Ryder Cup. But there's there's a contingency there of people who go to those games. The the uh, The... Finland contingency or the Swedish contingency, they're there. I mean, those guys are flying. They're catching plane tickets and flying to Buffalo. I guarantee you they're talking about it right now. Oh, the Europe, yeah. The European countries. They're going countries. to watch their team win. You, yep. you know, it's a huge following. And uh, The European they, nations and Canada care deeply about this tournament. It is that's a huge right. event for all those countries. But the U.S. is meh. Yeah. And they and they air most of the games on NHL Network, and and I watch everything. I watch it all. I agree. I with love you. watching this tournament. So it gives us some extra hockey to watch in during the Christmas break. <laughs> That's right, and it's great hockey. You yep. know, uh, every game is well contested. Uh, yep. Look forward to seeing it in Buffalo too. Yep. they've had it before. They've had the tournament there before. So I'm glad it's coming back. Yep. And an and outdoor game is going to make it really good. And I'd love to go see it someday, but it just never comes anywhere close to us where I can get to it. So, But we certainly do watch on TV, for sure. That's right. So our next story is also of an international f- nature. 2016 World, G- uh, uh, 2016 World Under 17 Challenge is currently going on in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario at the SR Center, which has uh, this tournament has some of the top 2018 draft eligible talent. Uh, most of the guys playing in this tournament are are year 2000 birth years uh, playing in this tournament. It's an 18 tournament. Three teams from Canada, which are known as Canada Red, Canada White, Canada Black, uh, USA, Czech Republic, Russia, Sweden, and Finland. Uh, they just finished the round robin uh, portion of the tournament, and all all eight teams move on to the quarterfinal round. 
USA finished with a two and one record in their round robin and won the number two seed in going into the quarterfinal. Uh, the reason I included this tournament is uh, there's a local kid, local to this area, playing in that tournament. And I know his dad. I've refed with his dad many times. Uh, the kid's name is Tyler Weiss, playing for oh, Team, yeah. Team USA. I've talked about him before on the podcast. Yes, yeah. Uh, but uh, he is playing for Team USA. He's played in all three games. Uh, he doesn't have any points. He's got a couple of penalty minutes, but he has been playing uh, for the team. Um, he's a BU commit, so you folks in Boston uh, can uh, uh, are going to get to see him. Uh, I don't think he's he's still a junior in high school, so he's still got a year, his senior year, still got one more year playing for the Team USA uh, development program before he goes on to BU. Uh, but uh, at this point, he is committed to BU. Very so, good. And Team USA does play Sweden in the quarterfinal, and that is at noon tomorrow. That's Thursday the 3rd. Uh, and they're not playing these games on, on the NHL network, are they? No, this... they're not. No, these – but they yeah. are streamed online. Um, yes. I had to do some digging to find it, but I can – in fact, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm Facebook friends with his dad, so his dad's putting up links <laughs> – when his, when his son goes on the ice to play, you know, oh, that's he's great, putting man. up links to the, to watch the game. So what Super. I should do is turn around and, and retweet those uh, so that anybody following me through this uh, podcast can uh, get those links as well. Yes, sir. Um, Very but, good. But he usually tweets right before the game happens. And, and because this is a tournament with eight teams, uh, the games are actually going on all day long. They're not they're not primetime games. Yeah. Like Team USA is playing at noon tomorrow, for example, middle of the week. So. Okay, well, let's move on to a new segment. Uh, we're going to call it our HockeyNuts.com Power Rankings for the week. Something we're going to do every week. Um, I'm going to include in the show notes a full ranking of all 30 NHL teams. But during the podcast, we're just going to highlight the top 10. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about our top 10 for this week. And at number 10, I've got New Jersey. At number 9, I've got San Jose. Number 8, I've got Ottawa. Number 7, Minnesota. Number 6, Chicago. Number 5, Pittsburgh. Number 4, Washington. Number 3, your your New York Rangers. (laughs) And number 2, the Edmonton Oilers. And number 1, as painful as it is for me to say it, (laughs) the Montreal Canadiens. But, you know, obviously uh... Montreal, they haven't, they're the only team in the league that hasn't lost in regulation yet, so... That alone, they deserve the number one uh, seed this week. Um, now, we discussed before the show, you were kind of surprised that I had the Rangers as high as I did. And, and the reason I did that uh, was because of how well they've played the last couple games. I mean, they just, the, the ass whooping they put on. <laughs> yeah, I was very, I'm, I'm uh, keeping it under my uh, hat, but I was very glad to see them uh, put it on, uh, you know, beat the snot out of Tampa Bay because yeah. I, you know, I there's been many times where I've sat there and eaten crow. I've, I've, I work with a, a gentleman who uh, is a Tampa Bay fanatic. Oh, nice. And so, so I you got uh, bragging rights this week on yeah, that one. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say anything either. I was kind about it. But oh, I you couldn't. should. You should. <laughs> so. So but if you if your team wasn't mentioned, you want to see where they fare in our power rankings. And this is purely <laughs> our opinion of where we think the teams are. Um, go on, go on the uh, show notes, and you'll see all thirty teams ranked in order of where we see them. And we'll update each week our our rankings as teams rise and fall and get hot and cold. So, okay, well, let's move on to our upcoming schedules. We'll take a look at the week ahead. Uh, first of all, Boston has four games this upcoming week. They're at Tampa Bay on the third. That's tomorrow night. They're they're at home against the Rangers on the fifth. And they're at home against the Buffalo on the 7th. And they are on the road at Montreal on the 8th. So three of the four teams are very, very good teams. And and this schedule scares me to death. (laughs) Yeah, that's a tough week, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, God, I don't know what to say there, Wayne, other than the Bell (laughs) Center there at the end of the week. If you guys pull out a win, tell us how you did it. Yeah. (laughs) Well. we that is that is the Rangers. They they cannot win in the Bell Center. It just well the thing I, is with I, with with the Bruins in Montreal. It seems like they beat each other in each other's buildings. So Montreal's won nine games in a row against Boston in Boston, but Boston seems to be able to go up to Montreal and beat them in their building on a fairly regular basis as oh well. My. So yeah, Hen- Henrik the whole nine yards doesn't matter what goalie we put in net net. 
It doesn't matter what happens. When we go to the Bell Center, especially if we've got to play Montreal twice in the year, we're in trouble because they win that game. It's nine a tough times place to play for sure. Extremely difficult. Their fans are obnoxious and they're, yeah, they're loud. Yeah. And that goal horn that they have is, is nails on a chalkboard to me. So I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. All right. So how do the Rangers week look? We, we, we have, we have a, a difficult week as well. Um, I want to put a little segment on to all hockey fans uh, tomorrow night, no matter who your team is, if you want to see a good game, tune in to the Rangers against Edmonton tomorrow night from Madison Square Garden and make sure you got a full bowl of popcorn. You're not going to want to get up out of the seat when you start watching that because it will be fast and very exciting. Um, I'm hoping we win that game, but that's going to be a big test. And uh, Edmonton's playing very well. And I'm uh, looking forward to that game. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, and then we, of course, turn right around, have to fly up to Boston yep. and play against the Bruins at TD Gardens on Saturday. <clears throat> and I don't know what we're going to do there on Saturday, but if it's at all possible, maybe we'll get together and watch that game, Wayne. Um, but up to you. But uh, uh, that, that... I won't be able to. I'll be in Boone oh. that day. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's we're going right. up. We're going up to watch uh, my daughter and her marching band at college. So. Oh, that'll be good. At the App State football game. So yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be really good. That will be really good. So, but I will oh. be catching the game later on in the evening because the game's yeah. at three thirty. We'll be getting home or back to the uh, hotel right about the time the game starts. So. Oh, that'll be great. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm not missing it. I will not miss it. Uh, the, the, the other two games of the week for us against Winnipeg on the 6th and against Vancouver on the 8th. Uh, if we, again, this is another week where if we can go two and two. I'm, I'm a happy camper. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, that's, those are four tough games as well. Yeah. Vancouver's kind of come back down to earth a little bit. They won the first four games of the year and since then they haven't done anything. So yeah, they, they were saying on NHL now tonight, which I watched, uh, that they their claim to fame last year was Montreal won their first nine games last year, or they won nine in a row, um, and Vancouver beat them uh, last year yep. to knock them off uh, from what they were playing. And, of course, you know, they gradually fell, 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 fell as, as the injury to Carey Price took effect. Yeah, well, yeah, that was more Price injury than any one team doing anything to them. But, yeah. That's right. That's right. All right, so, well, Carolina has uh, a lighter week a little bit uh, than the uh, the other two teams. They only have three games this week. Uh, first and foremost, they go at Nashville, which I enjoy Carolina-Nashville. Even though they're East Coast, West Coast, or Western Conference, Eastern Conference, I wish these two teams were in the same division because, you know, they're neighbors. The states right. are neighbors to each right. other. Uh, and it's about a six-hour drive between the two cities, Raleigh and, and Nashville. Um, but the states are literally right next to each other. And th I think that would be a good rivalry if they were somehow put in the same conference, at least, or, or in the same division, even better. Uh, but anyway, they play their, their first of two games against them. Uh, they're at Nashville on the fifth. And then they have a home and home against uh, the New Jersey Devils. The first game is in Raleigh on the 6th, and then they're in New Jersey on the 8th. So yeah. I see all three. Nashville's going to be tough test, although Nashville hasn't been playing that well to start. Uh, but they're still a really good team, and that'll be the toughest test for them this week. And then the Devils also are playing fairly decent right now. So, um, so yeah, all three will be tough games for Carolina, but all three are winnable in my opinion. I agree. Corey Schneider is the difference. I mean, that's what's going to be the whole key. If he shows up, and he has been this year, uh, the Carolina is going to have a tough job winning both those games. Yep. They're, they'll be happy to come away with one win on that home and home. Yep. So, and as for highlights of the upcoming week, I was looking over the overall NHL schedule, and I've got a few games jotted down here that, that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Uh, first of all, we got Florida at Washington. Those are two decent teams in the East uh, that are playing on Saturday. Uh, Chicago, Dallas. If Dallas can kind of get things around that and start playing well again, that'll be a really good game to watch. Uh, the second game uh, of the Stanley Cup rematch, the Pittsburgh Penguins are traveling out to San Jose on Saturday to play the Sharks. And I for sure will be watching that game because I'll definitely be back at the hotel by then. Um, so I'll be able to pull up the laptop, assuming I can get a decent internet connection anyway. 
uh, and I'll be watching that game. That's the second time they played each other, so they're th- this year already. Right. So they're getting those games right out of the way. They're closed out. And then they, yeah, they won't play each other again the rest of the year. But it is entirely possible. You know, last night Sam Rosen was saying, now the only way we play St. Louis again this year, because it was the second time we played him, is if we meet in the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, maybe that'll happen. I, <laughs> yeah. I, but that is entirely possible that Pittsburgh and San Jose will meet again. Yep. Uh, you know, I, but I, it wouldn't happen until June if it does happen. That's right. So. It won't happen until June. So, and then the next game I had circled on my calendar: Tampa Bay and Florida, the Battle of Florida uh, on the seventh. That has become a nice little rivalry since both teams have gotten good. Yeah, uh, you're not you're not kidding there. And with Marcheseau playing the way he is, um, that that will really be an interesting game. Yep, it'll be uh, a fun game to watch. And then Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay bounced back too from from our game, and they beat the Islanders six to one. So yeah, whatever uh, memories they had of the game against the Rangers are gone. They well, left they the probably park. had a come to Jesus meeting after that game against the Rangers. So that, I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so Edmonton and Pittsburgh, the battle of uh, Connor McDavid against Sidney Crosby, should be a fun game to watch on the 8th. That's Tuesday. You're not kidding. And then San Jose comes east to play Washington also on Tuesday. Another that, great game. That'll be a good game. And then uh, closing out the week, Chicago at St. Louis, which might be, I didn't look at the NHL schedule, that might be the Wednesday night rivalry game for next Wednesday. And, and what a great game that is going to be too. Yeah. Uh, St. Louis is a very, very good team. So uh, it it should be a great game. So the, all, those are the highlighted games that I've got. I don't know if there are any others that piqued your interest. The only other one, uh, you know, of course, I think the Boston game against us on Saturday is going to be a good one. But I think tomorrow night again, the Rangers against Edmonton, I think that's going to be a good game to yep. watch. And I wouldn't miss it if you're a hockey fan. Yep. Yeah, I didn't I didn't include the Thursday games just simply because I don't know when the <laughs> this particular podcast will be uh, put up. I'm going to try to get it up tonight, but um no no promise i don't work till 10 30 till tomorrow so i can stay up late tonight oh yeah <laughs> i don't know all how right you do, man. <laughs> so let's move on to the ncaa minute uh i've got a few points i want to make this week first of all maine my team uh university of maine got a tie and a loss uh at colgate so they have now dropped to three three and two and have come back down to reality for maine black bear fans <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this week upcoming, they have a chance to redeem themselves. They've got two games against number five ranked Boston College. Wow. Uh, BC is 6-2-1 and one so far this season, so they're off to a really good start. Uh, the, and both are technically home games, although one game is in Portland, the other game is in Orno, which is where the University of Maine is located. Um, and both these games are the first conference games for Maine this year. Uh, and if you're not familiar with how the state of Maine works, Portland and Orno are about a two and a half hour drive apart. Uh, Portland, the arena they're playing in is where the old Portland Pirates played uh, okay. in the American Hockey League. Uh, of course, Portland Pirates moved out this summer and moved out west. Um, I think they're in Tucson now, I think. I could be wrong. But I think they're now the Tucson franchise in the American Hockey League. Uh, okay. but, but that left Portland without a hockey team in that city. And Portland is the biggest city in the state of Maine. So uh, so the University of Maine decided they're going to play several games in that arena uh, this year. And this is the first game. So that'll that'll draw a big crowd. That place seats about, I think it's roughly 7,500 people. And it'll be pretty close to a sellout. They always draw well when they go to Portland. Uh, and then Saturday night, the following night, they come back into their home building in Orno. And uh, that also, BC brings a good crowd. So both games are expected to be a sellout there. Uh, now, you the know, other major headline. Well, go ahead. I've mean, I seen uh, on Fox Sports, uh, if you go, uh, it's not like the Sports South or any of those channels, but uh, I'm not sure of the names of some of these. Fox uh, College Sports, yeah. Fox College Sports channels. Uh, the, the main games have been t- being televised at yep. uh, some of them. If they're and- televised locally in the state of Maine, mm-hmm. Fox Sports Channel usually picks up the feed. And it's usually home games that get picked up. And I would not be surprised. I haven't looked at the TV schedule. Probably not the Portland game because one of the knocks on that arena has always been it's not set up well for uh, TV crews. Like the seats go all the way up to the back wall and that's it. There's no skyboxes. There's no press box up there. There's 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 no facilities 
for TV crews to be able to televise a game in that arena. And that's been one of the major knocks on Portland and as why UMaine has not been able to host, at least up to this point, an NCAA regional. is just uh-huh. the, It's not a good arena for TV crews. Mm-hmm. So, And the fact that the arena is right in downtown Portland, it's just not a good place for TV crews to be. Um, so Maine has really, it, well, they never hosted a uh, NCAA regional. Uh, they always go to Massachusetts, New Hampshire, you know, Rhode Island, Connecticut, wherever to play NCAA regionals when they make the tournament. But anyway. Um, That's interesting. Yep. Yeah, um, but in Orno, it is set up well for television. And if I would not be surprised if that BC main game is on TV Saturday night. Okay. On that channel, on Fox Sports College. Or it could be on Nesson. Mm-hmm. One of the two will have it. Nesson does broadcast games on... Uh, uh, generally, Nesson holds on to their uh, college coverage until January, or December or January, until the season's... They're well into the conference schedule mm-hmm. before Nesson starts televising games. But um, somebody will probably have the game. And if you're a main fan, uh, they do stream their home games... Uh, the Portland game won't be streamed, but the Orno game on Saturday will be streamed online if you want to watch that. Very so, good. All right, we'll move on to uh, the big story of the college hockey world, though. Uh, I know Maine is big for me, but it's not so much for the rest of the college hockey world. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we had uh, big upsets this week. Uh, well, not I wouldn't say big upsets, but Number two, University of Minnesota Duluth beat number one, University of North Dakota, twice uh, over the weekend, five to two and three nothing. Now, both games were at Minnesota Duluth, uh, so that gave, and in college hockey, home ice advantage is a bigger advantage than it is in, in NHL. Because um, there's almost nobody rooting for the visiting team in those buildings. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I can attest to that. Um, oh, that's good. So college hockey rinks are overwhelmingly uh, supporting the home team. So, so I would imagine uh, they'll play each other in North Dakota, and I would bet that the scores will be reversed when they go to North Dakota. So, yeah. but I did look into it a little bit, and it was the first time that a number one and a number two team played each other uh, since the NCAA tournament back in 2014. So it's been a couple of years okay. since the top two teams have played each other. And that was back in April of 2014 when number one Union beat number two Minnesota in the NCAA tournament. And believe it or not, Wayne, I watched that game. Oh, you did? It was a hell of a game. Let me tell you, one goal victory by Union College. Uh, I did watch that on TV. Yep, must have been a fantastic Uh, game. Fantastic game. It really was. Yep. So, okay. Well, that brings us to the um, rankings for this week. And number... uh, We'll go through the top 10 real quick. Um, and just as a personal note, Maine is no longer receiving first play or any r- votes for this ranking. So they've completely dropped out of the picture once again. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens this weekend with, with BC. But number 10 this week is going to be Minnesota State. Uh, number 9 is Notre Dame. Number 8 is St. Cloud State. Number 7 is UMass Lowell. Number 6 is Quinnipiac. Number five is Boston College. Number four is Boston University. And dropping from number one, North Dakota drops to number three this week in the poll. Number two, Denver. And now your new number one, Minnesota Duluth. And they That's and something. they were unanimous uh, in the Minnesota. And this is the U.S. College Hockey Online poll. I had a question. Didn't Has Minnesota Duluth won the national championship? I believe so. I think they have, haven't they? Recently, too. The Bulldogs, right? Yep, yep. And I know, I believe they have recently, within the last five years. Yeah. I don't have it in front of me, but um, they've been they've been a really good team for the last several years. Yeah, they have. So this wasn't a huge upset. This was uh, Auburn beating Alabama, not so much. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's a perfect or, way or, to put it. Or Duke beating North Carolina, you know, it's it's not it's not a nobody beating a powerhouse. These are two powerhouse teams going at each other this weekend. So that's uh, right. Must have been fun games to watch, especially if you were in the building. I agree, hundred so, percent. All right, well, that concludes our college hockey coverage for the week. Let's move on to the KHL minute. And uh, the only thing I came up with uh, was the fact that the KHL schedule is taking a break. Um, they're calling it their international break. There are actually no games in the KHL schedule from November 2nd through November 6th. And 
leading up to that break, there were only three games on the 30th around the league, two games on the 31st, and then coming out of that break, there's only one game on the 7th. Um, and the reason being, and you'll see in a minute when the, the, the two top teams, CSKA and SKA, uh, neither team has any games from the 28th to the 8th. And the reason for all of this teams taking time off is uh, they they devised their calendar with the interests of Team Russia in mind. And in this time of year, they have what they call the... Um, I'm going to pull up the website here. They call it the Euro Hockey Tour Tournament. Uh, two or three points during the winter, they have a tournament that puts the national teams... And I don't know where it went. All right, they have a, what they call a Euro Hockey Tour. Uh, it's a tournament that they've been doing since 1996. This year, it puts Sweden, Russia, Finland, and Czech Republic. So the European nations uh, have an international tournament uh, at two or three points throughout the year. Uh, and they have one during the uh, period of November 3rd through the 6th. And then again, December 15th to the 18th. And then again, February 9th through 12th. And then one final time, April 27th through 30th. And during this time, the KHL schedule takes a break so that members of the Russian national team can go play for that team in this tournament. And there are, there are a bunch of uh, Finns and, and Swedes and Czechs that are also playing in the KHL, so uh, those players also obviously get to go to play for their team. So right now there's no games going on in the KHL because of this tournament. And, and the vast majority of the players, if you look at it, uh, come from those two teams that I mentioned before, the CSKA, the old Red Army team, and the SKA out of Leningrad, or St. Petersburg, sorry. <laughs> Used to be Leningrad. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, St. Petersburg's on a roll, as you know. Uh, I reported last week they've won 10 in a row, and I don't think they played between last Thursday and this Wednesday because yep. the league went through the international break. But they pick up again very shortly after Monday. I, they might even play Tuesday. So yeah, their uh, first game, their first game coming out of the break is on the eighth uh, for both teams. Okay, so that's is that Monday or that, I think that's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So you know that's definitely going to be one of the uh, things I look at for next week's KHL minute. Can they continue uh, to uh, to win games in a row? There, that uh, ten games in a row is just astonishing. Yep. Um, it really is. Um, that was really a good one. I, I, I learned a lot from you again, Wayne, <laughs> on the uh, schedule break and everything, uh, because I did read about the uh, international break and it's part of my KHL minute, Yep. but, um, mine deals directly with the team Vityas, which was playing very poorly at the beginning of the season, but has made a comeback and they've been winning quite a bit lately. As a matter of fact, uh, Vit Vityas Poldosk, Poldosk, I Podlosk. Poldosk, Pod, Poldosk podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not really sure how you say that name. Podolsk uh, defeated the um, the team from Minsk, the Dynamo team from Minsk. Yep. Uh, nine to six in an action packed game that moved Vitya's into a playoff position to end the first phase of the KHL season, which came to an end. Of a couple days ago. Uh, so, you know, you're a Bruins fan. I'm a Rangers fan. It was always, it's always good when you're coming up to the, to the Thanksgiving break and your team is in the top eight. Yep. Uh, you, you know, Hey, we survive, you know, usually after the first 20 games, you can kind of tell what teams are going to, you know, fare well, uh, barring injuries for sure uh, that are on their way to the playoffs or at least going to make a, a push for it. And, uh, what teams aren't. Uh, so, you know, that's a good thing for Vityas. They moved into contention and they had to fight and claw their way back into this. And they did. So, uh, that's my KHL pick for the week. Do not have their record in front of me, but, uh, they just moved into eighth place. Cool. All right. So let's move on to our picks of the week before we close out the show. And I will go ahead and get started. I found an interesting story this week. Uh, concerning Alex Ovechkin, um, Washington Capitals forward had a meet and greet session with young hockey fan Cash Niebergall, who he gifted one of his hockey sticks before a game at the Edmonton Oilers on Wednesday. Uh, and they showed a clip uh, on NHL.com of Ovechkin sending one of his sticks over the boards to Niebergall, who wore a red number eight Capitals jersey 
despite being at Roger's place in Edmonton. Uh, the, the video obviously went viral. Niebergall made a, a video thanking Ovechkin and said he hoped to meet his idol one day. So Ovechkin decided to make it happen. Niebergall, who turned eight last Saturday, was invited to the game against the Calgary Flames at Scotiabank Saddledome, which is a short drive from Edmonton to Calgary, uh, on Sunday where he actually met Ovechkin. He and the young fan, or the young fan thought it was only the right to return the favor and hand over one of his sticks to his favorite player. <laughs> yeah. Because he gave me his sticks, said a beaming Niebergall, who has been nicknamed Niebvechkin by his youth <laughs> hockey teammates for his super fandom. Cash's mother, Miranda, says she was just so thankful for the opportunity her son was given to meet his hockey hero. This is his person, Miranda said, after the Capitals 3-1 win. Not very many people ever get a chance to meet their person. Cash loves hockey. Everything is about Ovi, from skate laces to the way he tapes his stick, his name, everything is Ovi, Ovi, Ovi. So we just wanted to give him this chance. We just wanted to be at the game. This is a story he'll remember forever. So oh, it was a very, that, very interesting but... article that Ovechkin took. You know, he's on a long road trip. You know, they're playing in Edmonton one night, Calgary the next, um, or a couple days later. And he's, he sees this fan in Edmonton wearing his jersey, hands him his stick. Uh, terrific story. Oh, absolutely. That was going to be my pick of the week. <laughs> and, and, and you got it from me. But I think, uh, I think uh, you know, it goes to show once again, uh, you know, what a great guy Alex Ovechkin is to do something like that. I, I watched both of those videos and it was really, really neat to see. And it, uh, the, the, the guy's never going to forget it. You know, I mean, that that's a memory for that kid for the rest of his life. Sure is. And, uh, you know, it's not the first time. Alex Ovechkin does that kind of thing a lot, uh, quite a bit. Yep. So uh, Yeah, he has been known to do, and not just, you know, doing stuff like this, but, uh, you know, phil- philanthropy is, is one of his big things. And, he, and he, do- he donates a lot of money behind the scenes without fanfare. Nobody knows it, but um, he does do a lot of stuff behind the scenes for a lot of people. I agree and with I, you. And I think it's great. Yep. Super player. Super guy. Yep. And uh, there's a part of me that wants to see the Capitals win the Stanley Cup just for him one time. But uh, if it's going through New York, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> just so, once, though. Just once, right? That's right. Just once. Give him but, his uh, one cup, and then, then, the, then, <laughs> yeah. then, then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my pick of the week, uh, how could you not give P.K. Subban great – in fact, I'm going to applaud him right now <laughs> for his, his uh, dressing up as Prince. He looked exactly like Prince in uh, his attire that he put on for his Halloween costume, and I'm sure you've seen that picture. Yep. Uh, he, I laughed out loud when I saw it on TV the other night. Uh, my wife and I were both sitting there and the, here comes this past. No, that's not Prince. That is PK Subban. <laughs> man, we laughed our heads off at that, but that is my pick of the week. If you haven't seen it, go to NHL.com and you will see a number of people, uh, for a number of different teams. I did see Jack Eichel and, uh, I can't remember who he was with dressed up in Lederhosen. Yeah, uh, as part of their Halloween uh, garb, yeah, but a lot of teams uh, show their pictures. Yep. And but PK Supan stole the show on that one. I'm telling you, he he looks a spitting image of Prince. I, I don't know who did his hair, but it was really something. I got a kick out of uh, Austin Matthews dressing up as Ken Bone, the the <laughs> the the guy who went viral. The you know with the de- presidential debate there, the guy that uh, in the red sweater I, at, I at, the, at the seen- town hall debate. There's oh. been a lot of memes and and a lot of memes and and SNL sketches and that kind of stuff on this guy. You're just a regular guy. You just it, just the the sweater for whatever reason just <laughs> made this guy instantly famous overnight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Austin Matthews decided to be Ken Bone. So although <laughs> a very thin Ken Bone, <laughs> the real Ken Bones. <laughs> A little bit heavier. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's so great. yeah, there was on that article. There were a number of pictures that circulated from a bunch of different teams uh, throughout the uh, throughout the the league, where you saw players and and in some cases players and their wives dressed up um, in different costumes. And some of the costumes are are pretty funny. Oh, yeah. uh, it's great. That is great. Uh, great week for hockey this week. 
Yep. No question about it. A uh, couple of hat tricks that I saw, too. Colton Sevier for the Florida Panthers. And, of course, uh, Michael Grabner had a hat trick for the Rangers the other night. So uh, some good scoring yep. uh, going on this week. And look forward to another good week of action, and particularly no with course. our teams, for sure. That's right. So not so, not sure how much I'm going to see because we'll be out of town here. We're leaving, uh, well, we're, we're leaving super early Saturday morning. So I got to uh, go to bed fairly early Friday night. And then not sure how much of Saturday's action I'll see. But I will certainly see the Bruins-Rangers uh, game, if not live, in full, on replay with my uh, NHL.TV uh, account. I'll definitely see it before next week's recording, for sure. Yeah. So with that, we will go ahead and wrap things up for this week. And like I said, we record every week uh, on Wednesdays. And at this point, we're tentatively scheduled for that. Same time next week, 6 o'clock p.m. If you want to watch us live, uh, go to our YouTube channel. The link is in the show notes to the YouTube channel. Um, and you can uh, watch us record this live in person. And you can even interact with us before and after the show. We do interact with the chat. Uh, we don't do it during the show uh, because we want to focus on getting the podcast done during the show. But um, other than that, uh, you know, you can interact with us. Uh, you can also email the show. I gave the email address again at the beginning of the show. It's at feedback at the hockey nuts.com. You can call the show 919-960-1718. And you can tweet either myself or Steve. I'm at Wayne Halley nine. Steve is S ball five zero four man. So until next week, uh, we will, uh, talk to everybody later. <laughs> Have a good week, everybody. All right. You too. Ah! 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 Ah!